Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Today we're going to write some code to determine if some records exist. For example, does a customer have any orders, right? Do those records exist or not exist? We're going to look at three different methods, DLOOKUP, DECOUNT, and a record set, and we're going to see which one performs best. Today's question comes from Richard from Concord, North Carolina, one of my silver members. He says, I'm deleting a record in my main table, but there are two supporting tables associated with the main record that could have data associated with that record, like customers and orders, for example. I wrote this, I'll show you in a second, and it seems to work well enough, but my concern is if it's good code or not. So this wasn't Richard's specific question, but he wanted me to critique his code. And in looking through his code, I discovered he was doing something that could be improved. And now I mentioned this in the last quick queries video, 36, I think, but I said I was going to expand upon it with a video of its own. So sometimes quick query stuff does become a full video. Uh huh. In any case, this was the post in his forums and here's the code that he posted. And basically what he's doing is he's asking to see, are you sure? Are you sure you want to delete this? That's wise, right? Then he's checking to see if there are any related records and he's using D count. Now, the problem with dcount and all of the dlookup or d functions, dlookup, dmax, dmin, dsum, all of them, they're slow. Okay. And dcount is one of the slower ones because what you're doing is you're saying, okay, open up this record set, table query, whatever, and I want you to just run down the list and count how many items there are. So that is slow. It's got to run down the entire record set. It would be faster here to use dlookup. Because really, you just care if there are any records. You don't really care how many there are. It's just whether there are zero or not zero records. And for that, a faster method would be to use dlookup. So let's go through and see some different methods using dcount, dlookup, and the faster method, because I mentioned in the quick queries video, I'd show you an even faster method to check to see if records exist. But before we do a couple of prerequisites, this is a developer level lesson. What does that mean? Well, that means if you've never done any VBA programming before, go watch this video first. There's a little QR code. There's the link. I'll put a link down below. You can just click on it. This will teach you everything you need to know to get started programming in VBA in about 20 minutes. You should know how to use if then statements. You should, of course, be familiar with the DLOOKUP function. We're going to use the NZ function in case DLOOKUP returns a null. We want to convert it to a zero. The DCOUNT function. As usually, when we're working with record sets, which we're going to work with today, you're going to need to know a little bit of SQL, basic select statement with a where clause is all you'll need. So go watch this video. And the last method, the fastest method we're going to use involves using something called a record set. So if you don't know what a record set is, go watch this video first. Very important. Okay. These are all free videos. They're on my YouTube channel. They're on my website. Go watch all of those and then come on back. All right, so here I am in my Tech Help free template. This is a free database. You can grab a copy off my website if you want to. And in this database, we have customers and customers have orders, okay? So let's say we're gonna just wanna make a little button. You click on it and it tells you whether or not the customer has orders or not. Now you could take this further. You could make it so that the order button has the, you know, the order, the, the order count on it or it, it hides itself if they don't exist. You could do all kinds of stuff. But for the purposes of class, we're just gonna message box, all right, whether or not this guy has orders. Now let's start with the slowest one, which is dcount. All right, so design view, let me shrink that up a little bit. I'm gonna copy this button, copy paste, and this guy, we're gonna use dcount. And I had that backwards, dcount, there we go. All right, name your button, of course, all right, dcount button, right click build event, all right, so this will be our decount example. We'll need L as a long, right? L is going to be decount, count the records. Now, you can put an actual field in there if you want to. Star just means count, count all the records. It doesn't matter which field you count because it's just looking for a record, okay? You could put the ID in here if you want, like order ID, all right? Because if you're using an auto number, you're going to have a value in there. It, the star won't count null values. Okay, so if you want to just see how many like how many records have a first name, you could put first name in here. But if you just want to count the records, put a star in there. That doesn't really change the speed much. Um, we're looking in order T, where the customer ID equals the customer ID on the current form. 
message box customer has L orders. And you could get fancy and make, if it's a one, it doesn't display the S. I got whole separate videos on how to do that. Okay. All right. So this is just plain and simple. So save it, debug, compile, come back out here, save it, close it, open it, click two orders. Okay. That's fine. Let's make sure. Yep. Two orders. Now, this is fine and dandy if you actually want the count of how many orders this customer has. That's what decount is for. But if you just care whether or not they have any, right, do orders exist for this customer, then decount is slow. Any of the D functions that have to run down the entire record set, decount, desum, dmax, dman, it's gotta look through all the records, right? That's gonna be slow. A faster method would be to use dlookup. We can use dlookup and say, if it returns any value, right? It's gonna try to return, just look at one record and see if you can return a value. Look and see if there is an order for that customer. So let's try it with dlookup. All right, dlookup, name your button so Alex doesn't yell at us, dlookup button. And if you don't know that one, that inside joke, well, you haven't watched enough of my videos. All right, <laughs> build event. This will be our D lookup example. All right, now this time we're gonna look up an ID. So I'm gonna dim an ID as a long and same thing. All right, ID is going to be D lookup order ID from the order T where the customer ID equals the customer ID on the current form. All right, now, if there are none, this will return an error, a null value, which you can't stuff into a long. So we're gonna use NZ, the null to zero function, to say, okay, if that's null, make it zero. Because zero can't be a valid ID, right? Because auto numbers can't be zero. See how that works? And now we'll just say, if ID equals zero, then message box, no orders. Else, message box, customer has orders. And if. Okay, and this is gonna run much, much faster. I know you're not gonna see a difference with this database because this is a tiny database with like 30 orders in it max, right? But if you're running a big database across a network with thousands of customers and hundreds of thousands of orders, you will see a difference between these two. All right, and now let's debug compile once in a while, come back out here, save it, save it, save it, close it, close, open it up, and then hit the deco. Okay, this customer has orders. Let's find somebody who doesn't. This customer has orders. Let's go down the chain here a bunch. I don't think Jordy has any. Oh, he's got an order? Jordy's got an order? Oh, okay. Yeah. Let's go, uh, let's see. Janeway has one. Who doesn't have an order in this database? Let's go to the end. Okay, good. Peregrine took. Fool of a took has no orders. Okay. Customer has zero orders. Now, DLOOKUP is grand. I love DLOOKUP. But again, it's not the fastest way to do this. Okay. What is the fastest way to do this? Well, the fastest way to do this is to use a record set. All of the D functions, the lookup, the sum, all of those, they've got a bunch of overhead with them, right? Just extra garbage without getting into technical details. They themselves by their very nature are slower than if you were to simply open a record set to the table object yourself and see if there are any records. And I'm gonna show you the best way to do that. So we're gonna come back here, make a third button. Copy, paste, and this is going to be record set. Record set button. Right click, build event. All right, what's this gonna look like? Record set. Well, we're gonna dim RS as a record set. So we're gonna set RS equals current DB, the current database, dot open record set. What are we gonna open? We need an SQL statement here, select, order ID from order T where customer ID equals customer ID on the current form. Now, we're not done. We're gonna say comma DB open snapshot. You're not gonna get IntelliSense for that. You just gotta remember it or write it down. DB open snapshot. Now there's different kinds of record sets you can open. I don't really talk about them much in the free record set video, but in my developer class, we go over all of them. Um, a snapshot is essentially a read-only record set, and it's much, much faster 
than a normal record set, which is either using table or Dynaset, because Access knows it doesn't have to worry about writing to this record set. It can open it up in a snapshot mode, read only, nice and fast, right? Get the data that you want, look stuff up, and then exit out. So that DB open snapshot's gonna make it even faster, okay? All right, so we've got our nice, fast snapshot record set open. Now, we're just gonna check to see if we're at the end of file, EOF. So if rs.eof, then if you open a record set and you're immediately at EOF, that means there's no records. There's, there's actually two markers. There's BOF and EOF, the beginning of the file and end of file. I know they're not files, but these are throwbacks from when we used to work with text files, right? End of file, beginning of file. But if you get RS EOF, that means message box, no orders. Otherwise, you're on a record message box customer has orders okay and then when you're all done don't forget to clean up your variables uh if you have to set it you have to forget it all right just remember that you got to set it you got to forget it if you just have to dim it and declare it you don't got to worry about it but anything you have to set you want to destroy it so set rs equals nothing if you got to set it then you got to forget it that's a new one. i just i just came up with that okay save it debug compile once in a while close it Save it, open it, ready, boom. Customer has orders. Let's go back to Peregrine Took, and he does not have orders. So see? Now, I know you can't appreciate it here because again, tiny database, tiny bits of code, but if you use this in a big, big, big database, trust me, you will notice a difference. Okay, I've been doing this for years and I've, I've, I've switched over stuff where I was using dcount to this method. And we're talking about long reports that would take 10, 15 minutes to run before down to like 30 seconds. So trust me. And and if you're working with SQL Server, you can make this a pass-through query. And then it'll run on the server and it'll run much faster. Whereas if you use DLOOKUP or DCOUNT locally, your access database has to pull all of these records down and do the count, right? Whereas with this one, it doesn't. And as a reminder, I like to bring this up a lot because I see people do this all the time too. Don't throw D functions in queries. They slow things down. For example, let's say you wanna make a query with your customers and you wanna show how many orders they have, right? This is the wrong way to do it. Customer ID, first name, last name. And then over here, we're gonna do an order count. I'm gonna zoom in, right? We'll call it order count is d count star from order t where customer id equals the current customer id all right this is technically correct but it's gonna run slow on a big big database okay it's technically correct what's the better way to, why why is it slow because it's got to run through all of the orders for every single row in this result set Okay, what's a better way to do this? Don't use domain aggregate functions in here. Use an actual aggregate query. All right, add in that order table. Okay, change the join if you want to see all the customers and see zeros over here. That's fine. We can change that to a left join. This way we see all the customers. Okay, now make it a totals query and then add order ID and change this to count. Okay, so it'll group by these guys and count the order IDs. And boom, this will be much faster than using dcount. Don't use domain functions like dcount or dlookup in a query or in a continuous form if you can help it. Something like this. Try not to do that. Make a, make a query underneath and then base this on that query. Okay? If you want to learn more about aggregate queries, go watch this video. If you want to learn more about outer joins, that thing I just did where you change that join type, go watch this video. Very important, this one's a good one. If you wanna learn more about record sets and all the complexities and intricacies of those, I start covering them in developer 16, so I spend a lot of time on record sets. And in developer 19, I cover all the different types of record sets, Dynaset, Table, Snapshot. I know sometimes people see the topics that are covered, like in the top, like Chef's Kitchen Helper. I'm never gonna need that. But this is just the example that I use in the video to cover what I want to cover, right? I, I do a fun project, and in so doing, I teach you 
that stuff, right? It's like people see the lesson on letter writer in uh, the expert series where I teach you how to write letters from your access database. Yeah, you might not ever need to do that yourself, but I cover a lot of report techniques in those lessons. So they're very important. Now, members, we're gonna take this one step further. We're gonna make our own D function. It's gonna be cool. We're gonna make our own D exist function. It's gonna use that fast record set technique and we're gonna make our own function out of it so you can use it anywhere in your database, right? Same thing, we'll pass it criteria just like we do D lookup and D count and we'll just return a true or false value whether or not orders, whether or not records exist for that criteria. All right, this will be covered in the extended cut for the members, silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut videos and there's hundreds of them by now. Oh, wait a minute, someone's beaming in, hold on, hold on. It's the board, quick, I gotta run. Nah, just kidding. But that's gonna be covered in the extended cut for the members and uh, check it out um, if you wanna learn more and uh, learn some cool stuff. Gold members can download these databases that I build and everybody gets some free training. So come and check it out. But that's going to do it, folks. That's your tech help video for today. Hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up button right now and give me a like. Also, be sure to subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. And make sure you click that bell icon and select all to receive notifications whenever I post a new video. Do you need help with your Microsoft Access project? Whether you need a tutor, a consultant, or a developer to build something for you, check out my Access Developer Network. It's a directory I put together personally of Access experts who can help with your project. Visit my website to learn more. Any links or other resources that I mentioned in the video can be found in the description text below the video. Just click on that show more link right there. YouTube's pretty good about hiding that, but it's there. Just look for it. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, tables, all that stuff. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? And if you like Level 1, Level 2 is just $1. That's it. And it's free for members of my YouTube channel at any level. Speaking of memberships, if you're interested in joining my channel, you get all kinds of awesome perks. Silver members get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, and there's hundreds of them by now. They also get one free beginner class each month, and yes, those are from my full courses. Gold members get the previous perks, plus access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos. Plus you get access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions and all kinds of source code that I use. And gold members get one free expert class every month after completing the beginner series. Platinum members get all of the previous perks plus they get all of my beginner courses, all of them from every subject. And you get one free advanced or developer class every month after finishing the expert series. And you can become a diamond sponsor and have your name listed on the sponsor page on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time.